so we'd get in a limo and have a bottle or two of a great Bordeaux and we'd be drink the great Bordeaux as we were going through the in and out burger and we'd go from theater to theater on a Friday night. What do you think the relationship with Brian works? I don't know if it's it's, a, it's the ability to have a beginner's mind or something, a, a, like an excitement that both my dad and Brian share that is incredibly youthful and very energizing and has allowed them to create and create and create and create. When I sort of found him and we, we began working together and found we had the kind of professional chemistry and we were friends and we could really get things done together, he was very, very clearly a solution to a problem in my mind, which was that despite the fact that I was getting, gaining experience as a director, that I was, you know, on a top television show, I had a name in the industry going back to the 1960 with the Andy Griffith show, other movies and American Graffiti and Music Man and other things. It was turning that corner and and, and actually getting feature films made. Brian just had a clarity of purpose, and he's also very creative. So he wasn't just a business guy. He understood the whole process at a very young age. He knew how to get things done, and somehow the leverage that I had to offer combined with his energy and focus and experience, and we, could, we could accomplish things. We got Night Shift made. What do you think uh, Night Shift did for your guys' relationship? Um, it was huge in building a, a, a trust and a, and a relationship with one another. First of all, it was, it was a successful movie, so that was good. I mean, it wasn't a big hit like Splash, but it was successful and it, and the, the machine of the movie worked really well. I understand that him following through with directing Splash uh, had a big impact on developing trust between the two of you yeah. as well. Uh, why was it? Because I promised that the studio wouldn't recut his movie. I had to get the assurance from the chairman of the board and the board itself that they wouldn't recut Ron Howard's movie. And that then he felt safe to go direct this film. Um, Otherwise, he wouldn't have done it. Tell about what you guys will do with your wives and the limo on opening night. So we'd get in a limo and have a bottle or two of a great Bordeaux. And we'd be drink the great Bordeaux as we were going through the in and out burger. And we'd go from theater to theater on a Friday night and ran, run in and stand in the back and see if, how big the audience was. Was it was the house full? Were they reacting? Were they laughing? Were they involved? And that's, that became a tradition for us that we did for at least 20 years. What did you guys enjoy about it? You enjoyed feeling that you turned nothing into something. And you, know, you turned an ether into a fully animated object, you know? Yeah. And that people were um, it was reaching them emotionally, and, and that was a big deal for us. And we were each getting a lot done separately, but we, you know, and when we began to have conversations about, you know, should we just, should we just align and, and build a company? I think we both just felt that our, our creative chemistry could just broaden our reach and the capacity of what we could do and, 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 what, we could, and what we could earn and, and the opportunities that we could offer other people too. And that continues to be sort of what supercharges Imagine. What's something after all these years that each of you do that gets on one another's nerves? Well, I probably do more things that could get on his nerves than he could get on mine. Like? Because he's not, he's not quirky like that. He's, He's the guy that you want to hang out with for a year. And I'm the guy that you want to hang out with for five days. <laughs> I mean, I might be much more exciting for five days, yeah. but you're, you're gonna, you'll last a year with Ron Howard, easily. Uh, Brian's obviously an emotional guy, uh, but the singular point he got emotional in our uh, conversation the, the other day, uh, was talking about you not getting nominated for 
best director for Apollo 13. Oh, really? Yeah. And it was surprising to me that even all these years later, it was still very, like, visibly painful for him. Wow. Uh, your thoughts on that? Well, you know, it's, um, we, we root for each other, you know? Oh, shit. That was the most terrible thing in his life, I think. The movie itself um, got nine Oscar nominations and was very favored to win Apollo 13. And it was just a critic's darling and it was very successful. And how does that happen without the director? My dad is really identifies as a director and he's definitely producing the movies alongside Brian. Mm -hmm. Well, he never felt like he had to take that credit. Like he never felt like he needed a producing credit because you know he really values what Brian does and he didn't want to undermine that. And Apollo 13 was such a labor of love and my dad in particular just really pushed himself as, as a leader, as an artist, as a storyteller, uh, did things that were dangerous, did things that no one thought possible in order to make a movie that has really stood the test of time. Right. When the film got nominated, my dad was not one of the people nominated. So any sort of wonderful sort of like, yay, we did it! He, he technically wasn't part of that we. And I think that that was, that was a defining moment where he was like, I'm not just a director for hire. You know, I developed these things from the beginning. He said he shared that disappointment with his kids because he didn't want his kids to think that everything for him works easily. So now that makes me sad, though that made me really sad. Even all these years later? Yeah. What, um, why do you think that still sticks with you? I don't know, it just does. Got him, you know, what a history together. And, and that in and of itself is, is emotional and rare, so rare. And it feels good to have that trust and also to, to feel safe in, in being emotionally vulnerable with somebody and to know somebody is, you know, is pulling in your direction. It means a lot to me and I think it means a lot to Brian. What did it mean to you then to see him finally win? It blew my mind, I loved it. <laughs> Can you describe that moment? Well, no, it was, it was amazing because we were very, very favored to win. But we were very favored to win on Apollo 13, so we both were very anxious, even though it seemed, you know, all the, th all the stars, moons, and planets were aligning themselves. Um, no, it was thrilling to have, to have him win. And then to have Tom Hanks give us the Oscar, it was amazing. Right. The whole thing was kind of perfect. How close were you to getting a different director for A Beautiful Mind? Well, there was a different director originally. <laughs> I just thought this movie was harder edge just different. I remember saying some version of like, I really want you to change, you know, I think it was, you know, just reshuffle the deck a little bit. And uh, he said he would, and he did. What was it about his skill set that made you feel he was your guy for it? Pro ultimately his value system and uh, compassion. Just, em just empathy was critical to, in this movie because it was about the love between a husband and a wife that that shouldn't work because he is schizophrenic and it's just the level of tolerance on something like that is very low and, uh, and um, it, it's just about the power of love ultimately and he's good at those themes. Was there ever a moment where you thought we need to part ways? You know what, we've never assumed we were gonna go on forever but we both love the company mm -hmm. and have kind of heart and soul committed to it. And it continues to, to service us. What's really changed is the company is now evolving and growing in a way that, uh, and we recognize the excitement of creating opportunities for other people, for our executives to grow, for creatives to come in and, and really make, imagine, you know, a place where they, not to just do a project, but to, you know, to sort of set up shop. And we're doing more and more of that in, in our sort of saying, we're, you know, neither of us are tired of doing what we're doing creatively. Um, but as a business, let's, let's get bigger 
let's let's create more opportunities for other people and it suits both of us.